Stefan Zweig was so thrilled to find this house here in Petropolis, in the mountains of Rio de Janeiro, that he didn't even notice the name of the street, Gonçalves Dias, named after the Brazilian romantic poet, author of the well-known Canção do Exílio, Song of Exile, which in turn was inspired by Goethe's Das Lied von Mignon. And so, filled with nostalgia for their homeland, for a time lost forever, Lotta and Stefan Zweig installed themselves in the street of exile. Zweig wanted to move away from the city, especially since his book Brazil, A Land of the Future, had received such damning reviews. The day of the move, Zweig wrote to his ex-wife Frederica. Today we moved, delighted. The house is tiny, but with a wide covered terrace and a lovely view. Quite cool now it is winter, and the place is wonderfully deserted, just like Ischl in October or November. Finally, somewhere to rest for a few months. They were there just five months. Enough, however, for Zweig to write some of his finest pages. The novella The Royal Game, the introduction to his essay about Montaigne, and his autobiography, much of which had been begun and completed in the United States. It was on this terrace in November 1941 that Zweig celebrated his 60th birthday alongside Lotte and wrote the poem Vorgefühl, a presentiment of the night which was already drawing near. As it happened, the solitude became rather tiresome. Letters took a long time to arrive. The few friends from Rio rarely visited, Petropolis being too far, and so he took refuge in his books. Upon arrival, he bought the complete works of Goethe, still in Gothic script, and later, on his birthday, he acquired two great additions to the library, Balzac, and Montaigne's complete essays, the latter sent by Frederica from New York. And it was Lotte who managed to find the complete works of Balzac here in Brazil. These two characters fought over the possession of Zweig until his last moments. And it was probably on this terrace that Zweig wrote his declaration, saying that, no longer able to write in his own language, life had lost all meaning. A few days after the tragedy, journalist Raul Azevedo proposed that the house become a museum. But nothing came of it. The house passed through several hands. In the early 80s, it was declared part of the protected historical heritage. Nevertheless, the building underwent several alterations and the facade was not maintained properly. But 60 years later, the house where Stefan Zweig lived his last five months was bought by a group of admirers. Casa Stefan Zweig is a non-profit, cultural, private law entity. Its main objective is to restore the house as a tribute to the memory of Stefan Zweig with an archive of personal belongings and collections of books, photos, documents, interviews, videos and films. 
The plans drawn up by the team of architects and engineers retain the house in its original state, with annexes for visitors and researchers. Casa Stefan Zweig will also house the Memorial to Exile, which will present the works of other artists, intellectuals and scientists who took refuge in Brazil between 1933 and 1945 and who contributed to the country's culture, art and science. Headed by historian Fabio Koifman, the archives which have been collected for the Memorial to Exile project will form the Sousa Dantas Fund, in honor of the Brazilian ambassador who saved many refugees in Vichy. As well as the documentation found in the National Archives concerning all foreigners who came to Brazil as refugees, the National Library holds a very important correspondence between Stefan Zweig and his publisher in Rio, Abraão Kugan, among other rare and unique documents. Another important collection has just been incorporated in the Casa Stefan Zweig. The papers about the literature of exile left by researcher Isabella Kessler, who was tragically killed in the Air France crash in June 2009. No acidente com o avião da Air France em junho de 2009. Enquanto duram as While the works are underway, Casa Stefan Zweig exists online through its website, in lectures and debates, and products such as books and translations. As well as leaving behind several works written and conceived in Brazil, Stefan Zweig left the legacy of a very important mission. To bring together all the documents spread about during his time in Brazil. It is our moral duty to reconstruct, tailor, tether and give the world an idea of what the last six years in Zweig's life were like. Brazil didn't come about by chance. Brazil was in Stefan Zweig's life since 1928 and later when he came in 1936. This piece of Stefan Zweig's story is here in Brazil, and it is up to us, Brazilian and international researchers, to recover this piece of life, the Brazilian life of Stefan Zweig.